Courtney Love read Kurt's final letter, which was piped in through speakers at his public memorial. Ahab becomes the climax as he is the worst king of all. However, much of his wickedness is due to his evil wife, Jezebel. According to King, he had never seen such an expression on her face, and yet she liked it. After finding out from her son whether he wrote it himself, Nellie gave him a notebook and advised him to write something of his own, saying, I bet you could do better. Write one of your own. Whether you get to meet them or not, you can certainly get to know them pretty well by looking at their websites. Um, one of my favorites is Yola. This gives you an idea of what an HFPA classic website looks like. Her website's in Polish. Yep, that's her in front of her car, her with her Great Dane, and her with her finger in the air. Jezebel was a pagan woman. She did not follow the God of Israel, but hated him. In 1 Kings 18, she purposely tries to kill the prophets of the God of Israel. I know something. I like this kid. She's mean, rotten, and vicious. Reminds you of my mom. But because I was raised in a fairly strict religious home, I tend to coalesce these concepts around God symbols and devil symbols, and I put them in my work. That was my takeaway. I mean, you know, okay, here my comes generation, Sunny. I mean, you got married, you, you tried to get a house, and you had kids. And this seems to be very intentional. They're thinking yeah. about it. And, and I, I agree with you, though. Millennials are brilliant. Your eggs, <laughs> your eggs start turning to dust. And so you have. Hey, Sonny. If parts of your body are turning to dust, it means you're a vampire. <laughs> Stephen, who was raised as a Methodist as a child, lost faith in organized religion in high school and remains not very religious. However, he prefers to believe in the existence of God, especially after some events, which we'll talk about later. Duck a la Francis. Rub the duck with salt, pepper, and chopped up rosemary. Poor rosemary. The thing I don't understand about Greta is why did so many world leaders listen to someone who is so young, almost a child? Um, what explains that? Well, we've seen it's, it's a form of narcissism, and so we've seen rising narcissism in the West, um, I mean, arguably over, over centuries, but certainly over the last 50 years, we've, uh, so, so psychologists have documented that there's uh, more narcissism than it was uh, intensified by social media. No! Come! Itana, come! Itana, hush! Upstage, Brad Dahl. That's where my career is at right now. Itanta! Come! Ay, ay, ay! See? She referred to you, Hefner, as the devil, right? And here he is being uh, called the devil child by another plane. And MK Ultra, the mind control victims often refer to their handlers as the devil, right? And so here is one of these two girls is the girl in question. She's a twin. And here they are. Look at this ghoulish m and effort. So he's like, he is Pete Davidson, right? Somebody who, you know, was, uh, you have all these women around them here that even at, at an older age, he would sleep with, you know, in a bed with like, you know, various six or seven women. It's a spirit that has no gender. Just because it's a spirit named after a woman, that does not mean it can't be found in men. Danny Masterson was the oldest of the six kids on the show, and in the first season, he sat the group down and told them that they had a good thing going with the show becoming a success, and this was their shot, and nobody better ruin it for him by doing drugs or being an idiot and having the press splash their mistakes all over the magazines. People often associate the spirit of Jezebel with sex and seduction and promiscuity. But I believe these are just some of the fruits of this spirit. At the core of Jezebel 
At the core of this wicked spirit is control. It's a controlling and manipulative spirit that takes people captive. I didn't always lie. No, when I was a kid, I, I told the truth. But uh, then one day I caught, caught stealing money out of my mother's purse and I lied. I, I told her it was homework, that, that my teacher told me to do it, and, and she got fired. Yeah, that's what happened. Thumper, no one hates Thumper. They think, hey, but on my way, I'm gonna be doing this. If you get hit, it's your own fault. Okay, then I'm gonna start kicking air like this. <laughs> yeah, and the best way to do that is to be like a character, an over-the-top, completely arrogant guy who's shirtless with sunglasses on, smoking a cigar, talking yeah. about hoes. Yeah. You know, and pimping hoes. It's like, is it a character? Or is it really you? And then when you find out, oh, well, no, I, he actually does run these campsites and he does have these girls working for him. Okay. Even we debated your, your, your dress code. And now there's a dress code uh, in the Senate where formal attire is required. He's looking at his tablet here, trying to understand what this, this rocket scientist is saying here. On the floor. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this? I mean, he can't understand the ladies on The View. <laughs> He's a senator. Discussion and the and the, and the, the Oh, it was yeah. very it's very important. <laughs> uh, I, I I believe that if I wore a hoodie on the floor, that the things it could be devastating to the the reputation. Um, and I think that's much more important than like you know not paying you know our debt or is you know shutting down the government or addressing Israel or other things. I mean that's so much more important that I could destroy. Destroy, destroy. I mean that's so much more important that I could destroy. Hulk smash! Hulk smash! Hulk smash! More than Hulk wants to smash. Smash! Smash! Hulk smash! <laughs> it's your own fault. Hallelujah, Jesus! Hallelujah!